Guten Tag, Eine und Alle, and welcome to yet another experimental series. Like all my videos, really. But this time, inspired by the works of Officially Devin, to make the videos more entertaining, easy to watch, and, most importantly, shorter as not to bore people into grave. Anyhow, Vorwärts in Namen Württemberg. So, originally, I was going to make this a narrative playthrough. However, I just want to play around with the editing and so forth to be on a bit of a learning run. So, there may be a parallel series to this that might be a narrative storytelling, but as a different faction. <coughs> Still German. In this turn, I will build the next tier of barracks, dirt roads, and vineyards, since the Kingdom of Württemberg is lucky enough to possess a vineyard, a valuable source of income. Politics-wise, scouting for more politicians that have any decent skills and traits, something which will go on almost indefinitely, as well as whacking up those taxes, just as slightly, as we'll need the funds for more troops and construction, and conscri <coughs> recruiting more soldaten for the army, which will go on for a handful of more turns. We do start off with a decent force, somewhat. Six pounder artillery, a unit of decent cavalry, militia, and line infantry. Going into the future, that six pounder cannon battery will have to be used with caution. At least until we can conquer at least one more territory to allow us to build a cannon foundry. We also need a general, so we hire Otto Karl Bach to lead professional troops, which are ordered to guard the bridge from any Austrian advance. Here I look at who I can trade with. Unfortunately, no one that already was and those Hessen Kessel bastards did not want to trade. But no matter, more present issues afoot. In the next turn, I was checking my political cabinet. Then I remembered that Württemberg has a very well developed college, so I set that to research conscription Though, to get chance to research anything other than military tech, I will need to conquer more territory to possess the right buildings to unlock the other two tech trees. And here is a heavy-handed piece of retribution for Hessen and Kessel for not accepting trade. All thanks to Emperor Napoleon and his generous heap of gold. However, a couple of turns later, while I was considering moving my still mustering army to advance against the Hessians, they were no more, absorbed into Napoleon's empire. Another couple of turns later, a small Austrian force appears in my southern territory and a Russian army menacingly occupying northwestern Bavaria. Before striking against the Austrian force, we start construction on a fort to better protect Stuttgart while my army is away on campaign in future. And so here we are, steaming towards the very first battle of the campaign. Looking at the map, there's a small rise in the centre of the battlefield. The Austrians have two cannon batteries, one being a 12-pounder, supported by the 6-pounder, which outranges my 6-pounder, so I have little choice but to close the distance. That small rise is perfect for my 6-pounder, but to get my battery and infantry to that line with little casualties and lessen the chance of losing my only artillery, the cavalry may have to be used rather aggressively to screen and distract the Austrians. All in all, the fight favours the enemy, slightly, but we are in the birthplace of Erwin Rommel, and we shall prove that fact very soon. So here I have the game in slow motion as to deliver the orders to Ottokar's forces. As mentioned in the battle plan, the six pounders are ordered to the small rise and infantry regiments to support. I notice there's an occupiable building to our left, a useful outflanking buffer. Not to forget to move up the cavalry squadrons on either flank to ensure that they're ready to attack or defend if needs be. As Ottokar's forces closed the gap, the Austrian six-pounder opened up on one of the cavalry units. In response, they ordered to seek shelter behind the building that protects the line's left flank. 
All the while, their 12-pounder had been pounded away at one of the Santa Infantry Regiments, causing little casualties thus far. Now that the infantry line is nearing the first point before the attack, and realising the Austrians are content to defend, the cavalry on the left flank are ordered to advance up to the outskirts of town, to both seek cover and in preparation to assault. After what has seemed an eternity, our six pounder battery has finally reached its position and unlimbered. Time to give the enemy a taste of their own medicine. So they are ordered to bombard the Austrian cannons, prompting the Austrian cavalry to spring into action. However, instead of charging down my battery, they awkwardly aim towards the cavalry unit positioned on the outskirts of town. Odd. After their dithering maneuvers, their morale breaks, trying to face down the infantry squares. The time now feels right to advance into assault positions and start the engagement good and proper. Remember the Austrian cavalry? They are back for round two, but to no avail as they are quickly seen off. A small opportunity presents itself. A unit of Landschützen is a tad bit exposed. However, they notice the cavalry charge heading their way and deploy stakes, for which are barely effective as the cavalry swings at them in an awkward angle and eventually seeing off the Landschützen, for the time being at least. The Landschützen was trying to fall back, though they were running perpendicular across the Austrian battle line. Using the disruption to our advantage, the infantry line is aggressively moved forward to seize the advantage. Also, the Austrian cavalry is back once again. The cavalry on the right flank charge into the Austrian left, and the line infantry are giving fire into the Austrian ranks at close range. The battle has truly begun. It's only going to get more desperate and bloody from here on. The cavalry on the right are pulled back to cycle charge. However, the Austrian units of infantry pursue and find themselves in a good position to pour fire into the flank of our battle line. Little choice given, the cavalry are sent back into the fray. The cavalry unit that was pursuing the Landschützen ended up routing, though before they did, they had fell upon the Austrian cannon batteries and now they are out of action. In the meantime, however, the situation is starting to become a tad dicey for our front line. What's left of the Austrian infantry have engaged our infantry in hand-to-hand -hand fighting. The cavalry units that survived their assault on the right flank are now sent in to assist the ailing infantry. But not in time, it seems, as the front line breaks under the weight of the attackers. With a hole punched through the Württemberg line, the surviving infantry lines are hastily adjusted to cover the gap. After the general pull back, the Austrian general makes a desperate gamble by charging through the gap and straight toward our general. But only briefly, as some retreating infantry gather back their nerve and are sent back to seal the gap. An Austrian infantry unit finds their courage and advances upon the rear of the Württemberg left wing. In retaliation, one of our units is ordered to give fire at them. All the while, their general is probing, or dithering, to find an opportunity to charge a flank. Though, this somewhat slows down the advance of infantry units that are returning from routing. But their general then decides to charge against the remnants of the right flank. The infantry regiment is ordered into square formation as a precaution. Maybe, this time, the rest of the infantry units can get back to the front line. Moments later, their general is killed while trying to turn the tide. Unfortunate for them and the Austrian Empire, but for Württemberg, it's made this battle swing massively in our favour. With their general on his way to visit Hades, and with most of his army with him, the rest of the Austrian forces lose heart and break away, turning this once desperate struggle into a mere mocking of operation. The after battle report is not exactly positive. It was not intended to be the bloody struggle it was, but it was how it ended up. At this moment, it would be tempting to pursue the shattered remnants of the Austrian army. However, 
With the casualties taken and not wanting to leave Stuttgart exposed to a counterattack, especially with the Russian army not too far away, they are ordered back to the bridge. A single turn later and we have fresh reinforcements and the Russian army is no longer in view. Hopefully nowhere nearby. Maybe the crushing defeat of their Austrian allies may have forced them to seek a battle elsewhere on more favourable terms. Another turn later and another batch of reinforcements. It's clear that the Russian army has moved on. Evidence of this is the increase of French forces in the area, which is also helpful for the Kingdom of Württemberg since it helps with security. Also, with the construction of the upgraded tier of barracks, Jaeger and light infantry regiments are now available to us. With a near final batch of reinforcements from another turn, Kampfgruppe Bach is nearly at full strength, but strong enough to finally be on the offensive. To ensure that the army is not attacked out of position and to scout out the Tyrol region before an attack, Kampfgruppe Bach enters the Alpine forest, also a recommended move as to catch any enemy army of guard and hold onto one of the key points of any offensive. Surprise! And here we have that element of surprise. An Austrian infantry regiment stumbles into the ambush and has now dragged in not only the nearby army, but also the army garrisoned at the capital of the Tyrol region. The stage is set for part two, where the Kingdom of Württemberg strikes. And there you have it, part one to the Unity of Germany series. Hopefully I can actually finish this one. I hope you have enjoyed and hopefully you'll bear with me as I try to bring out more videos to continue the Battle of Mons documentary series and this one. Anyhow, best not to keep you. Stay safe and I'll see you next time. Auf Wiedersehen, eine und alle.